Hello and good morning, it's Phil Thatch and today I am at the Cumberland Trail State Park, the Roaring Creek Trailhead. And today I'm going to be hiking down this trail towards a waterfall that uh, was originally taken to by my friend Ron Durant and it's called Polecat Falls. And I think it got its name because for years there was a, a tree that looked almost like a pole laying right across the waterfall. And apparently, I haven't been here in a while, but apparently that tree or pole is no longer here. So I figured today it would be a nice day to go and check it out. We have had a lot of rain this morning, but we're in a drought. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's basically no flow whatsoever. But if there's not, maybe I'll find something else to photograph while I take a hike this morning. So come along with me and we'll see what kind of uh, photography I can get into today. Most of the leaves have already fallen. Um, I'm a little bit late for fall color, but right here are a few, I believe these are beech trees that you're seeing in the background of this shot and they hold their leaves a long time. As a matter of fact, they hold their leaves all winter. They'll turn a, a kind of a light beige and stay on the tree all winter and they're really beautiful. Whoa, big spider. But uh, for the most part, the leaves are off the trees now. It's November uh, 7th or 8th, I think. I've been hiking for about a half an hour now. I still haven't gotten to the waterfall, but I did come to something that's very interesting to me. There's this pole across the trail and it looks a lot like the pole that used to be on Polecat Falls. I almost wonder if somebody didn't drag that thing out of here and leave it here on the trail to get it off of the waterfall. I have made it to the falls. It's actually a, it's a separate creek that runs into the creek that I've been hiking by all this time and I don't remember the name of it but maybe I'll be able to look it up and put it on the screen. The last part of the trail you have to go up and over a, a pretty big hill right here. Very rocky, very leafy and wet and uh, especially considering that I fell yesterday and destroyed my R7. I was a little nervous uh, climbing over that but I made it with no problem, just really taking my time today trying to, trying to learn from my mistakes. Now the other news is, right over here is Polecat Falls, which it doesn't have high flow by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it has enough to photograph. That's the good news. The bad news is there's a new pole on Polecat Falls. There used to be this tree that came over from the left and went above the falls and and uh, several people have framed up a really nice composition with that moss covered tree in the foreground uh, of the waterfall. I, I have made a shot of it, but not a great one. I've seen other people do better. And now that tree has fallen or maybe been cut down. It actually, as I look at the edge of it, it looks kind of rotted. So I think it may have fallen to natural causes, but it's right across the front of the waterfall. So. I'm going to uh, continue crossing the creek. First time I came here with Ron and Ricky, this thing was flowing so hard you couldn't even cross it, but the best shots are to be made from the far side and uh, I'll be able to cross it easily today. There is the tree right there. There's the waterfall, which is normally bigger than this, but it's still kind of pretty. And right here, is where that tree used to be attached. And it looks pretty rotted. I, I think it's, I think it has fallen due to natural causes. I've stepped back from the broken tree now and I think I'm going to attempt to, uh, to make my first composition from here. Uh, kind of a documentary shot almost showing the stump of the tree and the fallen tree. Uh, and they'll be kind of framing the water, the small today waterfall in the background. So that's going to be what I work on first. Let's see how it goes. I'm pretty happy with this composition. Um, you know, one thing about it is I've never seen anybody make this shot before because I don't know how long the tree's been down, but I haven't seen a single photograph of it. 
Like I knew the pole that used to lay across the waterfall, I knew it was gone way before I came because I saw people's photos, but I've never seen a photo with this other tree down that I talked to you about before. So I framed it up uh, and I, I made a shot or two with only the circular polarizer and I'm not polarizing it completely. There's a little bit of light, uh, you know, it's, it's overcast today, but there's a little bit of light coming down on the, on the tree branch and on these trees over here. And because when I polarize it completely, it, it just totally flattens it uh, and causes the tree branch to look, to not jump out at you. But with a, um, kind of a halfway or maybe even a third of the way polarized, you can see some of the light, the way it's hitting the tree branch. And I've got these, these uh, three trees here to the left of the stump that are also in the composition and the light looks better on them when the, when the polarizer is not fully polarized. Um, I made a few shots pretty tight at about uh, 35 millimeters or so. And then I dropped back to a little bit wider than 24 millimeters and, and made some more shots. I think I'm liking the shots better and this is different for me because I used to say half a second to one second is what you should always use for waterfalls, but I kind of like the way this one's looking at eight or 10 seconds. So that's making the, uh, the Maven three stop filter, the red one placed on top of the circular polarizer work out really good for me today. So when I shot my wider shot, I realized that I could adjust my composition, turn the camera just a little bit to the right, might look a little bit better. So I've made a few shots um, I don't know exactly, 22 millimeters maybe, uh, a little bit different than my first shots. And then as I was reviewing them on the back of the camera, I noticed that there's a rock just at the very top of the waterfall that has a lot of glare on it. So I went ahead and turned the polarizer and got it uh, completely to where that glare was gone. And what I may do, I may combine the photos where the, the amount of reflection on the tree is enough to where it has some depth and also in the same shot combined together with the shot of the top of the falls that has almost no glare on it. I think this may be my favorite photograph of the entire day. I really like the way this one turned out. I like the light on the fallen log there and I like the light on the three trees on the left hand side of the frame. The waterfall looks pretty nice. Maybe the top right hand side of the frame doesn't have a whole lot going on would be my only complaint about this shot, but I really do like the way it turned out. And I did combine two photos, one with a lot of polarization and one with almost none to make this shot like it is now. Today I'm using the three-legged thing Zela L bracket for the Nikon Z50 that Heather got me for Christmas a couple years back. Works really good as long as you're not using a first generation FTZ adapter, then the base on the adapter kind of gets in the way. But today I'm only using, the, the lenses that I brought are the 16 to 50 kit lens, the 50 to 250 kit lens, and for my ultra wide, I, bought the, I brought the Viltrox 13 millimeter, which is a native Z, so it'll fit right on there, which allowed me to use my Zela three-legged thing today. Speaking of the Viltrox 13, I've decided to go ahead and put it on. And what I'm doing is working on basically the exact same composition except for I was shooting from right back there where my camera bag is. And now I've moved much closer to the stump and the fallen tree. This thought it'd be interesting to get a different perspective. I like the composition from back there, but I, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, basically the same um, subject just a, a different composition and 13 millimeters 13 times 1.5 is 19 and a half millimeters which uh, some friends of mine say that that is the ultimate landscape photography focal length this much closer and much wider angle shot makes the stump look huge and the waterfall in the background look small but Actually, the waterfall is a pretty good bit bigger than the stump. But the one thing that I really like about this shot is the moss. And I guess there's two things because I also like that the top right of the frame isn't as boring as the last shot. I've changed locations again. And once again, I've come closer to the falls. As you can see, the, the big fallen tree is behind me now. I'm standing directly on top of the large boulder and looking straight at the falls. Still working with the Viltrox 
13 millimeter f1.4 of course i'm shooting at f11 and this lens is so wonderful i reviewed it a while back and really haven't had a chance to use it much since but the the uh, the manual focus throw even though it's focused by wire is just smooth as butter and it's really easy to uh to press the plus button here and uh zoom in and and get your get your focus exactly perfect for your waterfall shot and uh still using the uh, the maven circular polarizer and the three stop neutral density it's given me exposures around eight to ten seconds which is really just right for the way this waterfall looks uh, my compositions yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you can see there's a boulder that kind of points up maybe that way a little bit and not far above that you can see sky and i'm trying to get that boulder in the shot without too much sky and i did kind of a straight on version of the shot and i've also done uh, kind of a rule of thirds version of the shot trying to get some of that pool below in the shot as well to, to smooth out for the long exposure. And uh, I, I must say that I'm really enjoying using this Nikon camera for landscape photography. I, I, think, uh, I think Nikon cameras are just super easy to work with for landscape photography. Of course, I do hate when I turn the camera off and turn it back on. I have to remember to reset my two second timer. And I'm actually using the five second timer uh, which gives my camera a little bit longer to get steady after I press the shutter button. But other than, than that one nagging thing where you turn the camera off and turn it back on and you have to, the, the next shot you take, you'll, so you'll say, damn, I forgot to turn the timer back on. Uh, other than that, I'm really enjoying, I've always loved my, uh, my Z6 for landscape photography and this Z50 is great for landscape photography as well. I have two versions from this location to show you. This one is the one where I had the waterfall kind of in the center of the frame and the boulder above it also in the center of the frame. And on this one, I kind of did a rule of thirds sort of a shot with this one. I do like the center of the background has some color and interesting light back there on this particular version of the shot. I moved again. I was uh, right over on the other side of this boulder and I've moved to the right. And now my composition has the waterfall and kind of the left side of the waterfall in the shot. I made a few shots like that horizontal and um, then I decided while I have a nice L bracket with me, I decided to try a couple of uh, vertical shots. And I must say that I do miss a fully articulating screen when I'm doing vertical shots. Horizontal shots, I actually like this sort of flip screen better than a fully articulating screen but for vertical shots this is not the best way the the way the the z9 is or the fujifilm xt3 where it does this and flips up as well is probably better and uh, you can also get by with a regular uh, fully articulating vlogging sort of a screen is better than this for vertical here is the first of two shots from that location and in this one you've got the boulder that I'm so fond of in the top right corner of the screen and the waterfall rule of thirds and uh, all sorts of stuff going off to the left and here's the vertical one that I cropped down from 2x3 to 5x7. I like the foreground of this one where it's polarized and you can see through the water at the rocks below. Overall I must say I'm pretty happy with my trip to Polecat Falls this morning. I think things have gone pretty well. I like the way the water looks in the falls today. I, and I think this fallen tree, while it's a shame, it did make for some interesting compositions. And I really appreciate you coming along with me this morning. And uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you wanna see some more stuff like this, subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.